right, here we have the 2022 Kodiak 283BHSL. There's a video walkthrough for it. And we'll start up front. Uh, you got your 12 volt battery right here. Uh, you got your propane tank cover uh, with two propane tanks. Uh, there is a little bungee cord under there that holds it on for travel. And then you can pull it off to get your tank filled. Um, and then you got these little knobs right here and this will flip open. That way you can open and close the tanks uh, without taking the lid off every time. Uh, just like regular gas propane uh, tanks like you use at a grill. Uh, you got open and close. Uh, then you have the regulator right here. Uh, there's a little window right here. Right now it's red. That means there's no gas going through. Either they're closed or it's empty. Uh, right now they're closed. Uh, so if I turn this one on, it'll go green uh, right there. Uh, then up here, you can see it says supply with an arrow. That means uh, this tank is supplying your RV right now. Uh, you can have both of them on, and then whatever one this is pointing to, that's the one it's going to use. And then the one it's pointing to, if that one goes empty, this will turn red, but it'll automatically switch over and start drawing from this one. And then before you take the empty one off to get it filled, just make sure you flip that over. Uh, that way it won't leak through this pigtail. Um, but I recommend using one tank at a time. That way you know definitely which one is empty or not. Then you have your front tongue jack. Uh, you got a switch right here for the light when you're hooking up if it's dark. Uh, then you have up and down. Uh, you got your change, uh, your seven way. And then this right here is a breakaway cable. Uh, it goes to this little box right there. Basically, this is an emergency brake. Um, so you'll hook this next to your chains. You won't hook it to your chains. Um, it's the only legal way to do it. And then if it's uh, too long and it's going to drag, you can put a little loop in it. Um, basically, if this were to come off your ball and the chains would fail, uh, that little pin would pull out and it would lock up your brakes. That way it's not going way behind you. Right. This side you have storage compartment. And there's magnets on it to hold the door open. Uh, nothing on this side is just access to it on the other side. You got a couple switches uh, You got the side room right here Then behind it you have your power cord where you plug it in uh, this is a 30 amp unit uh, So when you go to campgrounds make sure you ask for the 30 amp hookups if you're at home you can plug into a household outlet with an adapter the only thing you can't run is your air conditioner because that requires the 30 amp service um, if you try running it at home and you're not plugged into a 30 amp outlet it will end up burning up your cord so you just want to be careful of that uh, then right here you have your city water connection and it's labeled up here uh, so just be careful which one you're hooking to uh, this one's your city water, uh, so when you go to the campground, uh, you'll hook your hose up here with your pressure regulator, uh, and then you'll have water to all your faucets, uh, your sink and shower and toilet. Then this right here is your black tank flush. This you'll use when you're dumping your black tank. There's a little spray port inside uh, to flush everything out and clean off your sensors. And this, you want to make sure uh, that the valves are open which uh, right here is where your sewer outlet is. Uh, so we'll go over that. Uh, so you got your valves right here uh, and they're color coded, so that's nice. So this one will be your gray tank and that will be your sink and shower water. And then this is your black tank with the black handle and that is your toilet water. Uh, leave those closed while you're uh, using it. And then there's a monitor panel inside once it's about two thirds to all the way full. That's when you come out and dump them. Pull the black tank first, let that drain out, flush it out if you want. Once it's empty, close it, then pull your gray tank and use that water to flush out your sewer hose. That way there's not a mess left inside of it. 
And back to the water hookups. Uh, you got your cable hookups here. Uh, so you got cable. And then uh, if you have a satellite, uh, you can hook it up there. Uh, there's also labels up here. So left, gray tank, right, black tank. This right here is your water heater. This little tab flips up and twists. Then your water heater's here. Uh, you got pressure release valve. Um, you pull that when you're winterizing it. So you pull that, release the pressure. Then you can pull the plug out, uh, unscrew it, and that's how you drain it. This is gas and electric, and the switches are inside for that. Uh, and for the gas, it does light on its own, uh, so you don't have to come out here and light a pilot. All right, moving to the back, you got your spare tire, you got your bumper, and there's caps on each side so you can pull off and then store the sewer hose in there. Uh, this is prepped for a Furion backup camera, uh, so if you wanted one, uh, it's just plug and play. You have a little spray port back here uh, to hose things off, it's cold water only. Then to this side, uh, you got a bracket right here uh, for your uh, griddle cooktop that's inside in the box. Uh, that'll just slide on right there. And then right down here, you have a quick connect for the propane and that draws off the tanks up front. Uh, you just pull that cap off, push this black piece back and then stick the hose in there. Once it's locked in, then you'll turn this valve like that and then you'll have propane to your grill. And when you're done, make sure this plug is back in uh, cause uh, mud wasps like to hide in those kind of places. So you wanna keep that nice and clean. All right, right here you have your electric stabilizers. These are the rear ones. And you have your switch right here. Uh, it's just extend and retract. Uh, you'll get your unit level before um, getting those down. Once it's all leveled and you're unhooked and stuff, then you come back here and to the front, doesn't matter which one you do first, uh, but you just hold extend until they're touching the ground and you'll kind of hear the motor wind down a little bit. You just want a little pressure on it. You don't want to try and pick up the camper with it because uh, it will bend those jacks. Um, so just, and you'll be able to see kind of the back end lift up just a little bit. That's all you want. You don't want you don't want too much pressure on them. All right, right here is your outside fridge. And you do have outlets there so you can plug something else in. All right, um, you got the exhaust for your furnace right here. Uh, when you're using it, make sure nothing's in the way of that and definitely don't touch it. It does get pretty hot. Um, and if things in the way of it, it will block the airflow and it won't work. Then this panel above it, uh, that's just the back of the refrigerator. Uh, it's just where we service it, where it plugs in for the electric and where the uh, burner is for the gas. Uh, you'll never have to go back there. And you got outlets here and you got cable hookup uh, with a TV mount right here. So you can bring the TV outside and watch TV out here. Then you have your fresh water fill, so you have a portable water tank, and this is gravity fed, so you just stick the hose in there and let it fill up. Uh, and the drain for that is right there, and it's just a little uh, valve that you just turn. Uh, front stabilizer jack button right there, with the jacks right there. Uh, this is prepped for solar charging. Uh, you have a port right here, so you can have a portable one. Or if you want a more permanent solution, there is already uh, the plugins on the roof, uh, just right up front. So you could get a solar panel, uh, get that mounted and then plug it into the port up there already. Then the other side of the storage compartment. Uh, so you got a couple light switches. Uh, let's see that one. What is that one for? Uh, that one, you do have lights on next to the stabilizer jacks. Uh, so you got four lights, two up front, two in the back, just to light up the stabilizer jacks if you're hooking up at night or for some cool lighting at night when you're camping. Uh, and then this one, you got 
lights right there and there's some on the other side exactly like that and then this last one is for the light strip in here so you can see what you're doing at night uh this is prepped for an inverter uh so that's nice then you got a couple jack uh cranks here so this one will be for the front tongue jack if the fuse blows or if you just can't get power to it and you're having issues uh, you do have a backup to hook it up and unhook it and then this one is for the stabilizer jacks uh same thing if a fuse blows or if it's just not getting power and you're having issues uh you can get them up and down then you got the hose this is for the spray port in the back and this just hooks right in and then you got a little spray nozzle on it all right we'll go inside now uh, you got a little grab handle here uh, this is in the travel mode and then you just pick up on it and turn it and then it'll lock in place then you open your door open it all the way that way you can get your steps down uh, so you got a little blue handle right here for the lock pull that and then you can fold your steps down and then on each leg there's a little trigger button right here so you press that and then adjust the legs you want to adjust it so that the um, top of the stairs is sitting flush with the bottom of the door sill that way the door will open and close without binding on it all right walking inside to the left you have your monitor panel uh, so you push these buttons and it'll light up right here telling you how full your tanks are and also tell you how charged your battery is to get an accurate reading of your battery you do have to be unplugged from your power cord that way only the battery is supplying power because uh, when you're plugged into the power cord uh, it does charge your battery so it will read full or charged um, every time you're plugged in uh, so make sure you're unplugged before checking uh, then you got your black tank it does have black one and black two and gray one and gray two uh, but there's only one tank of each uh, so it just be black one and gray one uh, there is a little bit of water in it because i just got done dewinterizing it uh, but that'll be all emptied for you then you have your two switches for your water heater you have electric and gas once you are plugged in and all set up you can flip on the electric and it'll start heating up it takes about 30 to 40 minutes to get up to full temperature and then once it's at temperature it'll shut off and then every time you use it or if it it's been a while and the water temperature cools down a little bit it'll kick back on and same thing with the gas uh, you flip that on uh, it'll take a couple seconds and then it'll light it'll try three times and after the three times it doesn't light um it'll just kind of stay off uh, this light right here will come on uh, that is for a fault light uh, so telling you it doesn't light all you have to do is just check your propane tanks make sure it's on make sure there's gas in it and then just turn it off and turn it back on again if you're using your fresh water tank you got a water pump switch here you just flip that on once it builds up pressure the pump will turn off and then every time you open a faucet it'll come back on and then when you're done camping, uh, you just make sure you flip that off. Then you got your light switches. You got your porch light, uh, so the LED strip under the awning. And then you got your ceiling lights. Then you got your slide room right here. So you have in and out. Uh, you just press and hold it until it stops. And then your awning. Um, going out, you'll have to watch it because uh, it doesn't stop on its own. Uh, but there'll be a valance that'll fold down and you'll be able to see the bare tube and I'll show you what it looks like all the way out uh, but once you see the valance fold down uh, about vertical uh, then just let off the switch and it's all the way out if you keep holding it it will roll up backwards uh, sometimes it causes damage sometimes it doesn't uh, so you just want to be careful of that all right so that's about all the way out and on each arm you have little pins right up there you can adjust the pitch of the awning so if it's kind of sprinkling out the water will run off 
uh, but if it's downpouring or it gets really windy like it kind of is right now uh, you just want to roll it in that way no damage is caused to it and then rolling it in uh, it does stop on its own because uh, once all the fabric's rolled up it just stops yeah it's really windy holy cow all right that's all the way in all right um you have a light switch here so you got some ambient lighting uh where the tv would go then you got your sliding doors for your bedroom um on each one there's a little lock right here take that and then you can slide open and close the door and then for travel you just want to make sure that's strapped back down uh, and then your bed lifts up you got some storage under here in that box is the cooktop for outside and then you got your bluetooth speaker right there uh, you got closet space on each side with a little rod to hang some clothes and a little cubby up top then you got storage up top here and then you got a light switch for these lights and then these ones above the bed are just push button and you got a little cubby on each side of the bed and there are outlets there so if you have a CPAP machine or just charging your phone at night or alarm clock or whatever uh, you got outlets there so that's nice uh, you do have tv hookup over there and then you got a little vent right there uh, on that knob you just crank open and close <coughs> uh, storage right here as you walk in and you got some more storage here um then you're, you got your couch right here and that folds down into a bed and you got storage underneath it uh, you got a couple drawers there, storage there. Uh, then you got a regular household microwave right there. Uh, you got cooktop here. Uh, this folds up. You got a three burner cooktop. Uh, so you got your three knobs and then you got a sparker right here. Uh, so you just turn that to high and then you hit the spark and it'll light right up. Uh, and then for the oven, it does have the sparker too, uh, so you just turn this to the little flame, push in and hold it, uh, and then hit the sparker. Uh, if you haven't used the oven in a while, uh, I recommend using a grill lighter to light it for the first time, because uh, there will be some air in the line. Um, and that is just right down there in the back right there. Um, and then once that's lit, hold it for 15-20 seconds let off of it if it stays lit then you can turn to what temperature you want uh, if it doesn't light just try it again and you do have a little light button so it lights up the knobs and then the oven light comes on and then before you fold this back down if you're cooking uh, make sure the burners are completely cooled and the grate is cooled because uh, if it is hot at all it will shatter this glass so you just want to be careful of that then you got stove top light and fan. Uh, then right here, push that down. That'll pop up. Then you got little outlet strip and USB ports. And to put it down, you just push this red button in. It'll slide down and click it to lock it. Push button light here. Uh, your sink and this cover comes off. And then you can put it over it for some more counter space. Uh, your fridge right here. Uh, pretty simple. You got one button. Push it on. If it's green, it's running on electric. If it goes orange, it's running on gas. And then if it's red, that means it's not running on anything. Um, this is an automatic fridge. So once you plug in, it'll run on electricity. Um, or 110, I should say. And then once you, uh, if you lose power um, overnight or if you're just not plugged in, it'll automatically go to gas. Um, and then turn it off, you just press and hold it until the light goes out. Uh, handle right here for the fridge. 
And then the freezer is just right there. All right, uh, you got your dinette seating. Uh, that backboard right there can come out and then you can take the table off, rotate it and use it as just bench seating instead of a U-shape. And then also the table does go down on those black blocks right there and then you can put the cushions on it and then you get another bed. Uh, drawers on each side, you got little storage here. storage there then you have your bathroom uh your toilet you got a foot flush right here press it a little bit it'll add water press it all the way it'll flush it uh, and with the rv toilets it's always best to add more water than needed that way everything goes down and the solids won't clog up uh light switch here that's just for around the medicine cabinet and then these lights are motion sensor on the switches on the back uh so one is always on and then two is motion light uh so once you close the door after a few seconds it'll shut off uh, and then every time you someone steps in here it'll come back on same with that light uh the medicine cabinet decent size then you got some storage here and then down there and then under the sink and you got your tub shower right here and this vent right here it does have a fan so when you're showering uh you can vent out the steam and the moisture and you do have a couple towel hooks then right here is your thermostat so you got your on off mode button here uh, you press it once it'll go to fan you want to make sure it's an auto that way, if you turn on your furnace, uh, the fan and the air conditioner won't come on. Uh, the fan, you can turn it to high and low if you just want to circulate some air. And then you got cool, and you change the temperature here. And then furnace, same thing. And then off. And then that light will go away after a few seconds. Last but not least, you got the bunk house. Uh, so you got a bunk here. And bed here, a uh, light switch there for the ceiling light. And then all these are push button. And you got USB port, USB port. Um, and then this one has latches. So you pull those and the bed will come down. Uh, then you got a table seating area for kids. They can play games, color. Um, and then this will also fold down into a bed too. So you basically have four bunk beds back here. Uh, and then you got storage for kiddos. And then TV hookup there. So they can have a TV back here. Um, I didn't explain the TV hookups up here. But uh, the TV hookups here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, this one right here is the antenna power. Uh, so if you're using the antenna on the roof, uh, you want to make sure this is pushed on. That's a booster for it so you can get a better signal. And then if you're using cable hookup, uh, you want to make sure that's off so it doesn't interfere with the signal. Uh, and then if you get um, your own dish or whatever, uh, I believe it's this one. Um, so yeah. That is everything to do with the 2022 Kodiak.